Hello. Welcome to the video. Uh, in this section, we're looking at 5.6, where we're going to find inverse of a function. So, a lot of a lot of things that we're going to be talking about is finding the inverse of, of a function. The first thing we have to do is be able to determine what an inverse actually is, or at least how we can find the inverse. So, in these first uh, examples, in these first examples, we are going to be given a function. And in this case, the function is f of x equals 2x plus 3. Now, in the book, sometimes the direction says solve y equals f of x for x. So, when you see that statement there, it looks confusing, all right? It does look a little bit confusing. But what you are going to do is this. First thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, replace f of x with y. So then you have y equals 2x plus 3. And then this 4x means solve for x. So for the you know for the majority of time when we're solving these problems, usually we're trying to get y by it by itself. But in this particular instance, we want x by itself. So subtract three from both sides. I get y minus three is equal to two x. Divide two to both sides, x is going to be, so essentially x is going to be equal to y minus 3 all divided by 2. So that's what they are asking for in this first part of the problem. The second part of the problem is they want you to find the input, which if you know that's your x value, find the input when the output y is negative 7. So you're now going to substitute negative 7 in for y and solve it. So this is the first part of the answer. The next part is it's going to be x equals negative 7 minus 3 all divided by 2. Negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So x equals negative 5. So x equals negative 5 is the second part of the answer. So when you are given a, a problem similar to this, this is what they're asking. Okay, same idea here. You're going to replace all of these with y, so it's going to be like y equals x minus 2. This is going to be y equals 2x squared, and this is going to be y equals negative x cubed plus 3. All right, let's look at number 2. So number 2 is we're solving for x. So I would divide everything by 2, so now I got y divided by 2. That equals x squared. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the square root of both sides. So in this particular instance, now I got x equals square root of y divided by the square root of 2. So in this particular instance, we're not allowed to have, um, uh, this would be what, plus or minus? I guess it doesn't matter. So we'll go, this is how we'll write it. We'll go plus or minus the square root of y over 2. And then they want you to find the input when the output is 2. So essentially it's going to be x equals plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So x will be plus or minus 1. So here's our two answers. If we look to number 3, so we go here, subtracting 3 to both sides. Now I got y minus 3 is equal to negative x cubed. So from here, I'm going to what divide everything by negative 1. 
So now it's going to be what? Negative y plus 3 is equal to x cubed. Take the cube root here. Take the cube root here. So x would then equal the cube root of negative y plus 3. So that's one answer. If I put 2 in there, so I got negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1, so x is just 1. <clears throat> so now we're going to get the reason why we kind of practice that is now we're going to look at finding the inverse of a function. So there's two main steps. The first thing is you're going to replace f of x with y. So I'm going to go y equals 3x minus 1. So that's the first thing you're going to do. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to switch around the variables of x and y. So these two get flipped. So now it's going to be x equals 3y minus 1. Once you've done that, solve for y. So add 1, so now i got x plus 1 is equal to 3y. Divide 3 to both sides, I got y equals x plus 1 all divided by 3. So what we have here is f of x equals 3x minus 1. The inverse of that is y equals x plus 1 all divided by 3. So that's the inverse. So again here, we're finding inverses. They're asking us to graph. Let's, let's, let's not worry about graphing it for right now. Let's worry about trying to find the inverse. So if we got, let's say I look at number 5. So it's going to be y equals negative x plus 1. Once you do that to find the inverse, you're going to switch x and y. So now it's going to be x equals negative y plus 1. And then we solve for y. So subtract 1 from both sides. x minus 1 is equal to negative y. Dividing negative 1 to both sides. So now I get negative x plus 1 is equal to y. And there's my inverse. Again, if you um, need additional examples, like for 4 and 6, I'm more than happy to do so. Uh, just leave a comment down below and uh, we can take a look at that. So here it says find the inverse of uh, f of x equals x squared. They give us some parameters. They're saying that uh, x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x is just a positive number. So again, change this to y. y equals x squared. This now turns into x equals y squared. Solve for y. So take the square root of this. Take the square root of this. Because of this parameter here, y is just going to be equal to the square root of x. Makes sense because um, we want everything inside x to be positive, And this would be what, plus or minus? Actually, it would just be there were no plus or minus, sorry. All right, so if you are to graph um, these inverses, to determine if an inverse is a function, what you are going to do is you're going to do the, uh, you're going to give it what is called the horizontal line test. Because if you're looking at just it, for any equation to be a function, it had to pass the vertical line test, if you remember in previous lessons or in previous math courses. Here, if it's going to be an inverse, then uh, it has to pass the horizontal line test. So it says consider f of x equals 2x to the third plus 
one, determine whether the inverse is in fact a function. So what you are going to do is simply graph 2x cubed plus 1. So when you graph that, So if I were to graph something like this, um, wait, make sure I have this set up. Okay. So if I just went two x to the third plus one, and I graphed it. So that looks like my graph. Does it pass the horizontal line test? The question. The answer is yes. It does. It, there's no uh, spot where it hits multiple multiple points so yes so that means that the inverse is in fact a function so we can we can determine the inverse is a function because we checked it so inverse is a function all right you can have it you can have any other equation be an inverse but not all inverses are functions so to find it again y equals 2x to the third plus 1 switch x and y solve for y so subtract 1 so I got x minus 1 is equal to 2y to the third divided by 2 so now I got y to the third equals x minus 1 all divided by 2 take the cube root so y is going to be equal to the cube root of x minus 1 all divided by 2 and that is my inverse. Again, this is the same thing. Uh, if you have questions on it, um, I'm more than happy to do to work it out. But um, please leave a comment down below, and I'll uh, I'll take a look at it. The last thing we're going to look at is is called uh, verific uh, verifying that one function and another function are in fact inverses. So basically what you're going to do is this. You're going to choose one of the functions. All right. Usually I just pick the first one. And you're going to find the inverse of that. It sh for it to be the inverse, it should be x plus 1. If it's not, then they're not inverses. So I got my y equals 3x minus 1, switch these, x equals 3y minus 1, solve for y, so add 1, so it's x plus 1 equals 3y, divided by 3, y equals x plus 1 divided by 3, yep, they are the same, it's been verified. So all they got to be is the same, all they got to be is the same thing. And that is finding the inverses of functions. I hope this helps. Until next time.